Hi everybody, Chris here. So question for you, which of these Excel files or which of these sheets would you rather work with? So I've got one data set here. I've got all of the data on one sheet. You can see we've got Frodo, Cuda, Luna's data on one sheet here. Would you rather work with the data on one sheet or would you rather fragment the data across multiple sheets like this? So we've got Cuda's data on one sheet, Frodo's data on one sheet and Luna's data on another sheet. Which one would you rather do? And here at Tiger, you know, we like to see the nuances and we like to be critical and weigh up the pros and cons. But this question for me, the answer is absolutely clear. And it's a mistake I see professionals make all the time. And it particularly kills small businesses. I've seen it several times already this year. So if you want to skip straight into the content, skip ahead a few minutes. But this is the Friday spreadsheet huddle. So a big welcome if you're joining us for the first time in the Friday spreadsheet huddle. So what's the Friday spreadsheet huddle? Well, it's very simple. We do a 10 to 15 minute tutorial and uh, we've just spoken about what we're talking about today. And then straight after the, the tutorial, we get into the huddle. So this is 30 or 45 minutes where I am available to answer your Excel questions. Yeah, whatever you want to talk about, Excel related, you want to talk about formula, you want to talk about automation, you want to talk about VBA, Power Automate, Power Query, whatever you want to talk about, I've got 30 minutes straight after the session and we can talk about it in the huddle. The link is in the chat. Yes, the only way to get in the, in the huddle is to watch live. The link is in the chat. Now, this session is a private session. It's not going to be on YouTube. We're going to get off YouTube. We're going to do the huddle uh, privately. And as I said, uh, the link is there for you uh, in the chat. The two rules, the two rules of the Friday spreadsheet huddle are no one talks about the huddle. All right. No one talks about the Friday spreadsheet huddle. Um, I haven't spoken about it at all. If you're on the mailing list, I haven't put anything out on the mailing list or on social media. First rule is no one talks about the Friday spreadsheet huddle and it might not necessarily be on a Friday. So the only way you can know about it is by uh, turning on your notifications on YouTube. Get the subscribe done, turn on your notifications, then 30 minutes before we do a huddle, you will get your notification. You'll have the chance to get in the huddle. With that said, what's this all about? Will this even work? Let's have a look. So we're in the huddle today trying to do 50 videos this year, trying to do 50. So we're ticking off the first video today in the Friday spreadsheet huddle. And then the subscribers trying to get to 100,000 subscribers. I think you can just see over here. We're going to tick these off as we go. We're on about 95 now. 95.246, all the way up to 100 subscribers. I'm going to keep this board as it is. We're going to tick off the videos as we go, tick off the subscribers as we go. The only way to get into the huddle is to be subscribed to the channel, turn on your notifications. So thank you so much for supporting us, the Friday Spreadsheet Huddle. And with that said, let's get into the content. So what do you think about our initial question? And what do you think? Let me know in the comments. What did you go for? We'll get into the discussion a bit later. Let's get forget all the cliffhangers and everything. A huge mistake small businesses are making is they're fragmenting their data sets. They're fragmenting their data sets. Now, don't get me wrong. People do this with the best of intentions. It's a logical thing to do. It makes you feel calmer dealing with big data sets. I totally get it, but it is a critical error. It destroys your spreadsheet because Excel is designed all of those functions and features, whether we're talking about formulae, pivot tables, things like Power Query, they're all designed to work with a single data set. Things get mental if you have multiple data sets. And I would go as far as to say we wouldn't have a YouTube channel, we wouldn't have a company if people weren't making this mistake all the time. A lot of the work we do is bringing together disparate data sets that over time have just been divided out. So in this case, we've got our dogs. This is a bit like a dog walkers, a dog walkers business record, whatever it might be. We've got to put all the data in one data set. We don't want to fragment the data across sheets like this. This file you can download and work along with me. So uh, we're going to go ahead and just delete the sheets with the fragmented data because you might be thinking, well, Chris, I don't like 
working with those big data sets because I'm only interested in certain rows in the data. I don't want to view all the data. That's why I don't want a whole data set. So that's the first thing we're going to deal with. How could you filter out and just display a selection of rows? Say in this example, we only wanted to look at Frodo's data. How would we go about doing that? And then beyond that, what about doing simple analysis? Because this is when you really feel the power of keeping your data in one place. How could we do a simple analysis? We're going to go ahead, put in a pivot chart, and you'll see just how easy it is to do if, if your data is in one data set. Yes, this is killing businesses across the world. Let's see if we can do a little bit to fix it today. So let's go about, I'll say bye for a second, and let's go about filtering this data. Okay, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to convert this to a table. So I'm just holding down Control and Shift, the right arrow and the down arrow on the Windows PC. You could do that manually. And I'm going to go to Home here and then Format as Table. Now, this is not absolutely necessary. And I've said on the channel, I have a kind of love hate relationship with Excel tables. There are definitely pros and cons, but um, it's probably the easiest way, particularly if you're just getting started with Excel, the easiest way is probably to put the data in a table. So we're trying to filter the data. Well, the easiest way to do it is literally to use the filters here. So we can go ahead and just hit, um, put the filter on, and I can see only Frodo's data is displayed here. So this is one way to do it, Alt-A-C, on the Windows PC is going to clear those filters. You can do it in a more visual, a more interactive way by inserting what we call a slicer. So if I go to table design at the top here, I'm going to go to insert slicer, and then I've got options. So I can put what's called a slicer. We'll see what it is in a second. I can put it in for any of the columns in this table. It's going to make things a lot easier if we just want, if we want to literally almost literally, I hate when people say literally, but they don't mean literally, you know what I mean. We can literally slice and dice this data. Sounded like J Jamie uh, Jamie Redknapp for a second there. Um, let's go back to the Excel. So for example, dog's name, I want to put a slicer in. This is what a slicer looks like. Very visual, easy to use. How often do you actually see one in Excel? This feature has been in Excel, what, 10, 15 years perhaps. Really nice interactive feature. You've got um, options here. Uh, to select multiple options, you can clear the filter very easily. So using a slicer is another option for us. These days, we have some really cool Excel formulae available to us. Let's go ahead and create another sheet. So it's going to get a little bit scarier. We are going to work across sheets now. We have the filter formula available to us. I'm going to do a little bit of prep here. I'm just going to copy the formats of this table. So again, control shift right, control shift down, control C. I'm going to move across uh, to the sheet I just created. I'm going to go control alt V and then T for formats, control alt V and V for values because I just want those headers. I'm going to delete these, these values for now. In fact, there's one more thing I want, which is uh, control alt V and W for the column width. You can see we kind of recreated the data. In fact, I could have just copied the whole thing across, but then I would have got the slices and everything else. Alt H O W three. If you like this formatting look, by the way, uh, we've got a video uh, in the video description below about how to get the tiger formatting look very easily. It's insanely easy to get this nice uh, formatting look. So I'm going to clear this data. Uh, so just hitting the delete key here. We're going to use the filter formula. So once again, we want to filter this data and just see a little bit of data. Let's use the filter formulas, fairly new to Excel, three or four years old. Uh, so for filter, we've got to select the data that we're looking to filter. So control shift right, control shift down, and then comma. The second part of the formula is include. So for include, we have to highlight the column that effectively we're filtering by. We're, we're going to filter by the dog's name, uh, control shift and down here, and then what do we want to filter by? Well, let's go ahead and give ourselves an option. Let's filter by the value in C2 here. You can see we're currently returning a calc error because we haven't got anything in C2, Alt H B A here. Just going to add some borders. But if we put a name in here, 
you can see, I can see all of CUDA's data straight away. And it's just appearing as data. But this is actually a formula. This is what's called a dynamic array. So this is another great option for us, for us using the filter formula to be able to easily view data. But can we do a bit more than that? Just got to go back to my notes quickly. Can we do a bit more than that? Let's step into dashboard creation. Yes, if your data is in one place, this is why it's so critical. It's pretty easy to go about creating some analysis and to move towards a dashboard. I'm going to go control shift right, control shift down again. I'm going to go insert, and it's going to get scary here. We're going to insert a pivot table. Don't worry if you never used pivot tables before. I really delayed it in my career. I only really started using pivot tables three or four years ago. Uh, but we can go insert and um, tables and then pivot table here. And we can go ahead and it's going to take us to this scary pivot table interface. You'll note because I pre-selected the data, I don't have to say here, I don't have to enter it again. Table one is the name of the data. This takes us to our quite scary pivot table interface in the video description below. We've got a video which is your first pivot table. If you never created one before, that will take you through it step by step. A few years ago, I've got a crazy long hair. You'll love that video. Anyway. For a pivot table, you just got to select the data we're interested in. What are we interested in? We've been filtering by the dog's name. And then what piece of data are you interested in? Depends what you're trying to analyze. Let's say we want to analyze walk length. And very quickly, we can see we've been able to get that analysis using our pivot table here. That's only possible, once again, because our data is in one place. Can we go further? Could we do something visual here? So once again, control shift right, control shift down, developing that habit of pre-selecting data that you want to do something with. Um, I'm gonna go insert this time. Let's see if we can get a pivot chart going. Getting slightly terrifying here. Insert pivot chart. Once again, this is the, the data we wanna work with and I'm gonna put it on a new worksheet and let's hit okay. Let's see where we get to. Once again, looks absolutely terrifying this interface. Over in the tick boxes here, you just got to select the data you're interested in. Let's do the same thing. So I've got dog's name. Then I'm going to go uh, walk length in minutes. And hopefully it's going to sum it up for me. Can you see that? Can you see how easy it is? Not easy to move a chart all the time in Excel. But can you see how easy it is to generate that analysis? What if you just broke out this in your next meeting? Yeah, it's really easy. Excel is designed to do amazing things when your data is well organized. All the stuff with VBA, I love VBA. All the stuff with um, Power Automate, Power Query, all the beautiful stuff we do on the channel. The truth is it's often a workaround. It's often a workaround for suboptimal data sets. And as I said at the beginning of the video, we wouldn't have a company. This, The fact that this happens really gives us a company and gives us a YouTube channel because professionals are constantly looking for those workarounds. Make it easy for yourself. Make it easy for yourself. Set up your data pro properly. Finally, what other cool stuff could we do here? If we go pivot chart analyze, let's put a timeline in. Also got the slicer option we could use again. Let's put a timeline in. I'm going to hit dates here because remember in our uh, source data, which is properly organized here, uh, we've got our date. So that means we can use the timeline on the pivot chart, what it's called. Uh, timeline on the pivot chart. So for example, if we only wanted to see January's data, that's all we have to do. We just click it there and I can see the charts uh, adjusting there. That's how easy it is, guys. And this is the mistake. It's killing small businesses, fragmenting data sets out. I understand why people are doing it, but it has serious uh, implications. You can see how easy it is to get stuff done in Excel if you keep the data in one place. We're going into the Friday spreadsheet huddle now. Uh, the next video to watch is right here. I'll see you there.